All right, we'd like to call the uh, uh, meeting of the County Commission to order. Uh, we have a forum here, all the commissioners are present. Uh, we'd like to start off tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance and Dedication. And uh, Commissioner Holbrook, if you'll lead us now. Yeah. <coughs> this is Mayor of the Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray, please. Our Father in the South, may we pray for the leaders of this world. May we as leaders also express our prayers for the leaders of our country. May we as leaders of this county pray for our leadership of this county and our citizens. And we pray for the citizens of our county for their lives they mean to the county, what they mean to their families. May it be our prayer to serve them to the best of our ability. That your honor and glory may always be paramount in our lives. Christ's sake, we ask you. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Holbrook. Uh, now we'd like to recognize any elected officials that are with us tonight. Are there any elected officials here? Seeing none, we'd also like to recognize any veterans that are here tonight. Any veterans, would you please stand for us? <laughs> Thank you for your service. Also, we'd like to recognize any uh, county department heads. Can you stand and be recognized, please? Chris Cooks, County Administrator. Greg Trywood, Cooperative Extension. Chris Green, Tax Administrator. Thank you. This time, we'd uh, uh, like a motion to adopt the proposed agenda. Unless there's any changes. I'd like to move to adopt the agenda, but I would like to make an addition. If so, I would ask to bring back information on the MPO. I'd like to have it added on the road agenda, maybe number nine. Add that on this agenda number nine. Any other additions? All right, we have a motion on the floor. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Citizen recognition. Is there anyone to sign up for the citizen recognition tonight? There is, sir. Mr. Trowick from the Cooperative Extension. Thanks for allowing, allowing me to be here. I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to share um, an exciting addition that we have for our staff. Uh, Kristen Duran, would you come up and just join me here at the podium? Uh, for the past two years, uh, Extension here in Cleveland County has been fortunate enough to um, sponsor students who have come in during a 12-week internship period. Uh, this is an in internship that's sponsored by the Department of Agricultural and Extension Education at North Carolina State University. This year, we're lucky to have Kristen Duran with us for 12 weeks. She started back in January. She is a senior at NC State, and she'll be graduating in May with a degree in uh, Agricultural and Extension Education, and she's got a minor in Animal Science. Uh, she's a Cleveland County resident. Her mom is the executive director at Broad River Greenway, and her dad works at the Duke Energy Station in Cliffside. So she's a homegirl, and we were glad to be able to host her here at home. Um, the purpose of the internship is to expose potential extension employees to the real world working cooperative extension, and I think she's gotten an eyeful of that in just a short amount of time she's been here. But still, it benefits us by letting us gain fresh perspective and new ideas and young talent and we certainly have a lot of young talent with Kristen. She's smart, 
she's uh, you know just she's a quick learner. She knows all this technology stuff that I'm too old to know about. And she's helped put Shelby and Cleveland County on the map. Uh, you may, if you read the newspaper, you may uh, have learned that uh, Shelby and Cleveland County is home to a vulture problem. And she's become our leading vulture expert, and uh, she's working with homeowners in a nuisance uh, abatement effort and has been uh, interviewed by a local newspaper and and charlotte network news as well so she's uh, doing a lot there she's delivered some programming for our 4-h members and is helping me with some of my livestock programs but i just wanted you to have an opportunity to meet her she had to come to a commission meeting as part of her internship experience and that's really to give her an appreciation for the strong partnership and the extreme value that the county partner plays in making uh, extension possible here in Cleveland County. So I just wanted to let you know who she was and if you have a vulture problem, you know who you're talking about. Jake, <laughs> <laughs> do you mind tell us you get a good five minute talk? Oh, would that internship program. Would you like to talk to them about vultures? <laughs> <laughs>
1.31 acres along NC 226 and 180 for manufactured home parts to general business. So I have. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda. Are, are there any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve. Take a motion to approve. No second. All those in favor? Raise your right hand, please. Thank you. <coughs> now comes the uh, a special part of our meeting, and we'll turn this over to Commissioner Hutchins for special recognition. I'm going to walk down and ask Kevin if he would come up and I'll walk down here. Will the other commissioners join me also? <coughs> Uh, 
Dollar is right behind you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Uh, I'd like to say, Kevin, this tribute to you as a man for number one, uh, what you do in Charlotte, Mecklenburg County. Then come home and uh, give a few time to your to your local county. And three is. Uh, I know the difficulty because this is not a lot of work with grants and applications. The time that it takes, uh, the responses that it takes, most people don't get it uh, when it comes to the time that it consumes. For you to do those three things uh, speaks unspeakable words. It's what you really stand for and what you are as a man. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Kevin, I, I don't know if you remember how I sat down in your office whenever I was first elected and as county commissioner and you. You uh, uh, really explained a lot as far as how the fire service works, and funding, and things like that. And that's something that's been invaluable in my time in service. So I really, I appreciate your time on that. That's been a lot to me. And uh, uh, also, you know, there's a it takes a special kind of person that can that can be a volunteer firefighter, uh, somebody that does it for a living. I'll echo what uh, Commissioner Holbrook says. Somebody that does it for a living is paid for it, and then uh, is willing to come home and do it all over again just just because they love their community that takes a special kind of person uh, appreciate the recognition that you've got not only for yourself but for the county uh, in this award thank you thank you Kevin, i've known you a long time and uh, county commissioner for 12 years and my mom um, but also i know that uh, 10 years of being a volunteer with king mountain uh, fire department i know what you have to go through and it's not fun getting up at three o'clock in the morning Good sleep and then have to run out in the cold and rain and go to a work fire and then after you get through all that go home take shower then go to every job. Uh, if, a lot of you just need to understand that uh, <clears throat> being a volunteer it takes a lot of time and there's a lot of training that goes into that and all that training is done uh, basically on your own in the sense that you, you have to pay for it or you have to get other people to come in to train and a lot of young people are not willing really to do that anymore. I'm hoping that what we see as Kevin is uh, in his award, that younger people will uh, see what you do and want to become volunteers for all of our fire departments in the county. Because it's, it's nothing more pleasing than to be able to get out there and, and work a fire and uh, then go work your regular job and know that you want to do something for the people of the county. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Sir. Do you got anything? Yeah. Um, I want to congratulate you and uh, thank you for uh, the impact that you have on this county. I know you've done a great job and enjoyed working with you and um, thank you. All the experience that you have has been invaluable to this county. So. Thank you all very much. It's real humbling. It was humbling Saturday night. Susan actually got to see it. It's been almost two weeks now. So uh, uh, it was a humbling experience. It caught me by surprise up until the last minute. A few things started to slip out. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, the. Uh, I'm only one of those probably, if I had to guess, there's probably close to 600 volunteers throughout the county for fire and rescue, so uh, they all deserve the credit as well. They all do a lot and they answer those calls probably, I would say, uh, easily 100 a day, if not more, uh, total. Uh, probably several hundred a day if you roll in the, the rescue and EMS. Now, the National EMS is paid, but they, many of those started in the volunteer as well, and some of those still volunteer too, so you know, the county's fortunate to have what they have. Thank you very much for the honor to be here, and I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you. Yes, my wife. Yeah, you want to come up and down? You want to come up and take a picture with that? Next item on the agenda is a regular agenda, and uh, first item under that is our Cleveland County Collections Policy. Ms. Ray, you have to proceed, 
you've got your committee here with you as well. You want to? Uh, yeah, I was here with you. Recognize me? I thought you were doing the same for Like I said, I'm Melanie Ray with the Museum Archival Committee, and our members President Swanda Crotts, and uh, Libby Saracen is also a member, and Carrie Melton. And then um, we did a collaboration effort with Henry Marley Kay, um, with the Destination for the County, who helped us a lot. In devising this policy. Basically, we came up with a collections policy um, for the curator of the Cleveland County Museum to use for consistency and guidance in the procurement and handling of items obtained by the Cleveland County Museum. And we're here tonight to um, submit this um, policy for approval from you tonight. And if there's any questions, Anne-Marie can answer questions as well. If you have any questions or clarifications. Commissioners, are there any questions? We received this in our package. So. There's no questions. So I'll give a motion to uh, approve the uh, policy. I'll make a motion to approve the policy. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is late applications for exemptions. Uh, Chris Green, our tax officer. Tonight, I bring to you uh, what uh, I think is the, the final group of applicants for the year 2012 for uh, uh, tax relief uh, under the elderly or disabled homestead exclusion, uh, disabled veteran exclusion, and one case uh, falling under the resident use value of farm use. Uh, all of these are examples that uh, have been reviewed by our staff and do meet the qualifications for that particular benefit. And uh, I do come to you tonight to request uh, approval uh, as an untimely application for 2012. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be uh, Any questions for I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the exemptions. Make a motion. Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next item on the agenda is a change of regular meeting from March 5th to March 7th. Uh, that's uh, due to our um, uh, Southern Commissioners wanting to trip to uh, ACO. Need to have a meeting on March the seventh, if possible. Any yeah. questions? Or I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to change the next regular meeting March fifth to March seventh. Thanks, sir. Is there a second? No second. Thanks, Al. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the um, Clinton Memorial Library Board appointments. And I'll turn it over to Ms. Bell. Um, we, the, you all approved several board appointments at the end of December. One of the boards that um, we did, did have some vacancies on was the library board. Uh, we've asked our library director, Carol Wilson, to um, find some people that are active uh, visitors of the library to possibly serve on that board. So tonight I bring before you four um, possible uh, appointments, uh, Tony Burnett, Robin Brackett, Dr. Rebecca Love, and Mark Hudson. These folks would serve, a, a, if appointed, would serve a three-year term, which would expire in December of 2015. Um, we will hold a special training uh, over the next few months for uh, both these folks and the Veterans uh, Advisory Board that, that um, that you recently also appointed. So uh, I'm bringing a recommendation before you that these four residents be appointed to the library board. And we can appoint four. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I get motion to appoint these people or any other changes you want to make? Is there a second? I second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. 
next item on the agenda is one we just added, uh, Commissioner Hutchins uh, for the MPO RPOs. Uh, our last, uh, our last meeting I was asked to bring back, I guess, the recommendation to see what we wanted to do about the MPO, well, I guess, county, you know, and so forth, and some of the information that we have talked to our legislators, we've talked to different people. I believe that, that we can stop it, but according to the MPO Association, the guest county, they're proceeding on to adopt a map that they brought to us. They said we did not have to participate, but they had the authority to take the property in, which that's the only question. And we've got a, we've got two options. We can request our legislature to try to do a state legislature some sort of action to stop it, or we can file a lawsuit. So that's that's the two choices we've got. You know, my recommendation would be that Katie put together an email, have the chair sign off on it, let's get it to our legislator and, and give them a, a, a set date to see if they can stop it or not, or they'll tell us what we need to do to stop it. I talked to Mike Hager at Rockland County, he's with us, he said he would help. Warren Daniels, he doesn't understand why I guess the county can move in and take it to the county. And their question is the same as ours, that why would we want to divide our county to have two different planning organizations plan for our transportation system when we already got basically the same thing in place. Now, and, and doing so, it, I feel like that the city of Kings Mountain wants to go that's what we talked about. It's stopping at the line unless King's not voluntarily accepts going with the MPO and only giving up the city limits of King's not entirely. So that's the two choices we got. Mr. Chairman, that counts. I'm going to choose uh, at the last minute because I think the legislative action is done. This lawsuit has to be filed in federal court. It's a, it's a federal. It's a federal. Well, they're saying they're saying it's federal. Yes, it would need to be filed in federal court. It would need to be filed in the Western District. And how long would it take to get something together to do that? The good thing about federal court is that there's uh, electronic filing, so it's just a matter of getting it prepared, and I would think you probably do it within. within we know that no legislative action is going to take place um, soon enough or they can't do anything. We have a week. Well, I understand that. Now, the mayor, <clears throat> talked to the mayor today, I understood that Gaston County was going ahead and filed their recommendation before the next month. It would come into effect in July. So it would be my recommendation that we ready to go before the end of the month and we file and get it in before the end of the month. If we got to file the lawsuit. Would an email be a, the right way to go on or maybe a resolution? If this board was to, if we had the board chair sign a resolution for us. Um, and that's something that the, the to go to the legislation. Yeah, I, I, I think a resolution would be good that, you know, all of us in, in agreement that you know why change our planning organization when it's going to split our county. Any other comments or questions about this particular issue? Over more, and 
I'll take let me take over in structure and planning and even to the point that some of the planning could be with economic development under that uh, one one thirty four federal guideline. And I really believe not. And this is me interpreting like the law you need to read it, but it talks about the statue they got about the uh, Lake Tahoe region and the Indian Reservation and open country in the Midwest. And it leads me to believe that part of this was probably put in effect because there was nobody looking out after the interstate highway out in the Midwest because there was no little town or no, no, no <coughs> rural RPOs that they gave the MPOs the authority to reach outside their territory. And I don't, I personally don't think it was intended to take over in our rural areas like it is now with, with us already having a planning organization intact doing it. So I, and uh, I asked Rick Murphy today if they've shown him any statutes stating that they could take over and, and they haven't told him he said no they just told us well you know i said they told us that we're going to take in all the territory until they put the map on the wall so they hadn't done what they said they were going to do so leave me to believe you know was well, the uh the timing on this is i mean is, when do we need to do something if we're going to do something well uh, that's something we really need to find out to find out when they're going to submit their we can get uh, Eddie. Can you contact him? Yes, sir. What would stop them from coming back six months or a year from now and want more, more territory? I mean, if, if we don't stop them, right? Because of, what was it? Did you say last year's when they came in and presented at Kings Mountain, and then they came in and presented two weeks ago the one a, a bigger map? Well, they, they, they started discussion about three months ago, and, and I went and Bill and I went to a meeting, and that, that's when we had been talking about this thing over a period of time, and, and we were obsessed that they wanted to take, and if they had for a larger area of Cleveland County, the first one, then they, they agreed that they would hold it to the city of King Mountain plus the ETJ. And that's what I thought when he was going to bring it, that's what he was going to show us. And the next thing I know, he's done expanded out of King's Mountain, almost 8,000 residents, 780 some residents of Cleveland County, which went all the way just about to Grover, cut back across the country, back into Gaffney County. And they said they had the authority to flood the area. Now, what flooding means, who knows? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm like you. If, if they take that and they get that close to Shelby, the next thing you'll say, well, we're going to take in Shelby, we're going to take in Russia. If, and I'm not so sure that uh, probably some of the other counties in the state is having the same problem. Mr. Officer, I think that if we were to go to the direction of the file laws that we go forward, Congress is going to need to know the reason. I think I think a reason would be why would we want to split our county in two different planning organizations when we have an organization that's doing the same thing they say they're going to do. Well, what I would like to do is have an opportunity to review the statutes that you're referring to, and um, certainly if they are going beyond the scope of their their reach or where they are permitted to go by by statutes. Um, certainly, there should be overlap. I wouldn't think there would be overlap of some of the same organizations with our county um, agencies. So, I'll just have to hold these statutes. And if they are extending beyond their scope, the appropriate thing would be to, to possibly seek an injunction against them and moving forward and, and allow the federal court to interpret what the statute is saying regarding it. But we just need to see what the statute says. And, uh, in the short term, would it make sense to do uh, some kind of a resolution or email or whatever it is to our legislators. That would be a less expensive way of going. I, I think a resolution or email or whatever would be really good to get to the legislators. 
if there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion to do whatever you would have to do, whatever the body would choose to do. I would make a motion that we, uh, as the county manager, uh, to draft an email to our legislative representatives, sign off on by the chair, uh, asking for a stoppage of their area in Cleveland County. Number one. Number two, including that motion is for legal counsel. We look at the statutes and report back to us as to what uh, legal interpretation they may have concerning the reach. And uh, ask if we can add the legal barrier to the legal problem also? Well, I, I would include that as per legal interpretation of whether that's permissible or not. Sir, if it approves the board, I would just compare a memorandum and then if, it, if it's permissible for a suit to be filed, I can go ahead and uh, we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Second. Commissioner Hawkins. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right. That's the end of our regular agenda. Now we're down to commissioner's reports. Let's start with Commissioner Allen. Uh, just a couple things, real quickly. Uh, we have special guests from Indianapolis, Indiana, representing the American Legion in town this week. Uh, so we're spending a lot of time with them and a new person that's uh, assuming some responsibility from that organization for our local bodies. So we'll be spending a bunch of time with this week. At, at two more meetings, background, that was background, they discussed the e co op thing. Apparently, they, they feel like they're, they're good. They're making all references and preparations for another fair. And it's going to be an agriculture fair. You know, and, and it didn't say war. They would have a petting zoo or not a petting zoo, but they're moving forward with the state guidance on having another agriculture fair because we to understand this outbreak can happen anywhere. Just that, so the uh, apparently they had um, met all the requirements and actually went over the requirements that they had to do, and they're looking about what they can do to improve the situation to do that. So that, that's back on track. Also, met with the board of health <clears throat> with the commissioner's recommendation of forming a committee to look into. Overpopulated animals in Cleveland County, and a, a list has been put together. As quick as we get it all together, we'll give it back to the commissioner and let them know who's on the committee. Some of the ideas is, you know, whatever we do, try to have a funding mechanism to have funded because you know, you know, with the new budget coming up, so forth. But uh, that's where it stands on, on that instruction that we had at the form committee. So we'll see something probably in the next 30 to 60 days from that committee. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Commissioner Hawkins. Chair. Chair. It's been a, a busy couple weeks, too. Uh, just real quick, uh, we had our first meeting of the Veterans uh, Council that this. this um, board has formed. Um, they're off to a quick start. Um, good, great group of people there, so uh, I, see some, I will see some positive um, uh, results from that, that uh, committee being formed. Also, uh, the Nursing Home Advisory um, uh, Committee, um, that's been a challenge for us to get people on that board for some time. I met with uh, Carrie on that, and um, we've discussed it with our ombudsman. We've made some uh, radical changes on our uh, our nursing home advisory committee. Um, now they they have a flexibility in when they meet, when they visit nursing homes. Uh, it'll do a whole lot. Uh, it'll it'll allow for more people to serve on that committee. So, matter of fact, it's retained two people that we're going to going to drop off with. So, 
been positive things, so it should be easier to get people on there. Yeah, so other business for the citizens of Cleveland County. Take a motion to adjourn. I'll take a motion. And a first and a second. All those favor, please say, uh, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you so much.